I get you ready here. And so I hope you guys are getting ready too. And you need to make sure you got your paints, your water, your canvas, your brushes, and paper towels. Okay.
We're just waiting for a few more people to pop up. And we'll get started in about five minutes. Make sure you have your paints ready, your canvas, um, brushes, paper towels, water. Hey, what's up? We're ready. Hey, hey, it's doing. We're ready, <laughs> ready, ready, ready. Yeah. This one's gonna be a fun one. It looks really hard. Yo, it looks wild. Yeah. But we're ready for the challenge. It's gonna be it's gonna be a good challenge. It's gonna be fun. Yeah. And I know you guys can all do it. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, it's a lot of faith. I've come, I've seen some really nice stuff come out of out of you all. So we're gonna be that. Now I'm mixing some purples just because um there's a lot of a lot of different uh, colors in this sunset. So if you want to mix some purple ahead of time, go for it. So just red and blue, equal parts. And you'll just need a little bit of that. So you can see I mixed a dark one and a light one. So I used the pink and the turquoise on this one and then red and blue on this one. So I got a really dark kind of um, violet one and then a much more cooler color when I mix the two lighter ones together. Okay. Couple more minutes. <laughs> so who's going to Rocky Horror tomorrow? Uh, we're planning on it if we if we have time. Uh, yeah, definitely going to the drag show though afterwards. Yeah. Ooh, yes, it's gonna be awesome. I can't wait for that. <laughs> I missed the the one during the fall, so I'm really excited that they're bringing them back. It's like no. Alrighty, I think we can get started. 
So welcome everybody. My name is Dana. If this is your first time watching these, um, these are our monthly online painting parties uh, for New Mexico Tech Performing Arts Series. Uh, we have a lot of fun doing these and it's just something for uh, tech students to have a nice fun mental health break and for the community to join us. So uh, if you know anybody that's interested in doing these, you can buy your own supplies and follow along with us um, when we do them each month, or we also offer painting kits. Um, we do painting kits free for tech NM tech students that are uh, going to school for full time or um, for the community at $10 uh, a kit. And those kits include all the paints, a uh, couple brushes and a canvas. So definitely take advantage of that, especially tech students, because this is all for you guys. Um, all right, so first things first, you're gonna need your paints. So if you haven't, if you didn't get your kit from us, um, you'll definitely need to have your paints and uh, paper towels, water, a couple different sizes of paint brushes and uh, something to mix with. I use stir straws, I mean stirring sticks. You can, you can use the end of your paintbrush, whatever, whatever you have that, that's good to mix. Um, canvas, I'm using a nine by 12 just for uh, visuals. It's easier to follow along with. You can use whatever size you'd like and Let's go ahead and get started. Okay. So this month's painting, uh, we titled Train Your Dragon. This was by request. Uh, a couple of my grad students that have joined me since I think almost the beginning, uh, since we started this painting party, actually um, wanted to do a dragon. So I came up with something fun that I think you all will like. And um, Let's get started. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do, you can tell that I've already drawn this out. And I just, this is just me. But um, for this one, what we're going to do is we're gonna put down our background first. And uh, the background on this painting is a beautiful sunset that gradiates into twilight. So it's gonna be a beautiful gradient that just runs straight mm -hmm. up. And then we're going to have a lake that's reflecting all the beautiful colors and lights um, that we have. We're gonna also have a few little hills and mountains that are lining it. And then of course, our gorgeous little dragon right in the middle. Okay. So start with my, my background. I'm going to start with some dark blue on the top, and then I'm going to blend that down into a lighter kind of um, turquoise, and then we're gonna go to uh, our oranges and our reds. And if you're here in New Mexico, you've seen these sunsets before, they are gorgeous. We have like some of the prettiest sunsets. Um, you definitely know what I'm talking about. So you can either do this, you can do this a number of ways. I'm going to wet my brush for the first time and just get that nice and wet. I'm gonna grab some of my regular primary blue. Right? And I'm just gonna start brushing it across. And just cause I wanna cover, I wanna make sure that I don't have any white in the background. I'm just going to brush it all the way across. Add water as I start to feel that it's drying up and just keep brushing it down. This will get thicker after we get this first base on. We're gonna add more to it. Um, if you saw the ad, it looks a little bit like a Van Gogh background. So that's what we're gonna go for. But first, I want to get this on. Okay. 
So I'm just gonna brush this and I'm gonna go halfway down. So I'll probably stop right about there. I'm just gonna keep brushing, brushing, brushing. Right there, you can tell my brush is drying out. So I'm just gonna dip it in water. Acrylics are awesome. They're very forgiving. They're very user-friendly. Um, definitely wanna give these a try. If you're a first time painter, it's probably the easiest medium to pick this. All right, so I've got about a little more than a quarter way down to my canvas. Now I'm going to add that turquoise. If you don't have turquoise, um, turquoise was part of our kit, but if you don't have it, you can definitely um, add uh, some primary blue, mix a little bit of white in there with a touch of yellow, and that'll give you a close to turquoise-esque kind of teal uh, paint. And you can see that just brushes on, it's so pretty. I love this color. And I'm gonna add some water to my brush so I can start blending these two together. You can see how I'm dragging that blue down and that turquoise up. And I'm just gonna pull that down. And go back up. I'm just pulling those together. Just brushing, brushing, brushing. So once I'm about halfway down, I'm going to add some of my lighter colors. So I'm gonna wash off my brush completely. Another, another paper towel here. I'm gonna take all that blue off of here. And I'm gonna grab some red and some orange. So I'm gonna dip half of my brush in the red and half of my brush in the orange. You can see it kind of overlaps. So I'm gonna allow them to mix as I paint them onto my canvas. So I'm just going to go swipe. And you can see they, they create this really pretty looking pattern. I'm not gonna mix them too much because I want to have those two colors kind of stand out individually on their own. You can add a little more of one color, whatever you prefer. Right now we're just getting this background done. Then we'll add some more detail. I'm just doing that to one side. I'm gonna rinse off my brush again. 
And at the beginning, I mentioned um, mixing some purples. So if you have your purples mixed already, and grab them. If you need to mix them, of course, just remember, um, blue, red, and just mix. Or if you got the kit, you can do two colors like I did. I did a um, turquoise and pink, and then the primary blue and red. So you can mix those two together if you want. I'm gonna dip my brush in water a little bit. I'm gonna grab this lighter purple and I'm just going to run it across on the side. You can see where they're kind of blending together with that orange and red. I'm gonna wet my brush and pull these two together. And then I'm gonna brush it on up, going up with those colors. Mix it in with the top turquoise. Just, you just need a little bit of water. These paints are really, really great. They're water reducible and um, they just rehydrate very well. So you can put them on your brush, leave, you can put them on your canvas, leave them up for a while, and then just go back if you need to. So we've got this kind of nice little sunset thing going on here. Now, now I want to go back and really thicken this up. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to get a dry brush. I'm gonna grab a good amount of paint on my brush and make it and try to make it as solid as I can on top. So you can see how much thicker that paint is. So it's not just a wash, I'm really laying it on thick here. So making sure that I don't see any white underneath. Nice and thick. And I'm gonna do that. Couple layers of that. I'm using a one inch flat brush. If you got the kit, you probably have a sponge brush. That's about a two inch, I believe. And that's excellent. That's probably even better than what I'm using. Um, especially to get this dark, thick coverage. Now I'm gonna start moving on. I'm gonna Grab a little bit of the dark blue and some of the turquoise, and I'm still I'm still using a dry brush. I have not I've not put any water on my brush. You can see, I'm gonna blend those two together, and they're pretty solid. So I'm just letting those two colors mix together as I drop them on the canvas. I'm going to start lightening this up as we go. Moving downward, I'm going to add a little more of the turquoise or light blue, whatever you got. Go 
because we're still at that point. The sun hasn't quite set yet. There's still some light in the sky. Just moving down, moving down. And welcome to all of you who are watching along on YouTube. I see you. I hope everybody's having a good night. And I'm so glad you guys decided to join me. I know there's a lot going on in town and on campus and all over. So that's awesome that you guys decided to spend your time with me. If you see, got this beautiful, beautiful gradient going on here. And so now I'm actually going to take my turquoise and add a little bit of white to it. Make this a little bit lighter down here. as I move into these lighter colors. This is nice and thick. So at this point, I'm gonna start grabbing some of my pink and I have not cleaned off my brush. I have not added any water. I'm gonna start getting some of this pink. I'm gonna start mixing it in here. Letting those blend just with the swipe of my brush. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm gonna grab some of my red and start pulling that in as well. And then you just get nice and thick. Everything's blending on my brush. So on the side, I'm going to grab some of that purple that I mixed. See how solid that looks. It's so pretty. Oh, dry cloth. I'm going to grab some orange, run it down on the other side by the red, let those mix together. Still haven't, still haven't cleaned off my brush. Just letting the, all of those colors blend together. I'm gonna grab some yellow. Oops. 
this out a little bit. There we go. Grab some yellow and I'm gonna kind of line that middle part. And you can see I'm this it's kind of going in a curve. The bottom right there. And that's just because I've got this lake idea in my head. So you don't have to do the lake idea. You can do mountains, you can do a stream. You know, you can always make these your own. That's what we talk about every time. So if you step away from this and look at it, you can definitely see your gradient coming down to this really pretty sunburst uh, yellow. And pull away a little bit. Let me know if you have any questions. Next, we're going to put our mountains up here. So I'll give everybody just a second to kind of step away, take a look, clean your brush off. Once you've got your brush cleaned off, we're gonna do our mountains. Um, if you're following along with me, I'm going to kind of cut through all this. Ooh, this is tricky. So I'm going to cut through all of this and make some nice little hills and um, I was even thinking that I might make a little castle on the hill. So I'm going to cut in this area. I'm going to go down. You can see I'm scratching it out with my brush just so that way I have something to follow. That's really helpful. Um, if you're not, if you're not confident or comfortable, just um, freehanding something out. You can definitely kind of draw with the end of your brush on your acrylics. And so I'm going to do one right there. I'm going to do a couple little ones right here. And then lead off into some bigger hills, little clips. And this is going, these are going to be where I'm putting my mountains. If you can't see that, I will come close in. You can kind of see where I scratch things out. You see these little scratch marks? I just basically use the tip of my brush. You can use a pencil. Um, if you put the paint on nice and thick, especially since we're using black and we're doing this, it's this is a silhouette painting. So um, if you do it like that, you most likely won't see your pencil marks after the fact. So it's up to you. So let's go ahead and grab some black. So again, I'm using my large brush. You can use a smaller one if you like. Um, whatever makes you feel like you have more control over your brush. And we're just going to lay down a nice thick brush of paint. And I'm just using my black. We'll add highlights later. But I'm just going to use my black and follow those scratch marks that I made.
and I'm doing dry brush here. So that way my black is really, really solid. So my black is super, super solid. I want this to be nice and opaque. I do not want to see my background. <clears throat> I'm going to follow my shoreline. All the way down. And since my heels on this side are a little smaller, I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. So I'm going to use my 5 8 angle brush. Angle brushes are awesome. I'm doing it dry brush. And I'm going to, again, I've always given this pointer. You want to post with your pinky, make sure there's no paint. Helps you have nice control over your brush hand. I'm going to connect. my two hilltops. And I'm just going to run this here. Just connect all that. So I have a nice solid shoreline. Okay. And then I'm going to follow those scratch marks I made and finish up my hills on this side, my little cliffs and the mountain top. So this should be dry already, so I can post my pinky right here and just kind of fill this in. That posting pinky gives you nice control, keeps your hands steady. For those of us who've had way too much caffeine today. go. And yes, we're covering up this beautiful sunset, but it's going to really look great behind these mountains just because it'll peek out and face us that way still. And again, solid black. No water. I am not diluting it in any way. It is nice and opaque. I don't want to see any light behind it. So yeah, solid as possible. We'll add our highlights later. Now, how gorgeous is that? That sunset looks really beautiful right there. So it's just, you could see the sun peeking through right behind that little ridge right there. I love it.
Now, since this is still drying right here, I want to tackle the bottom. And so with the bottom, I want to do kind of like a, a blue gradient for, for the sky reflecting off the water. So I'm going to take my wet brush and I'm still gonna use the one I was just using. It's, it's got a little bit of black on it still. And I'm going to just get blue and I'm gonna start at the end and bring it straight down. So I have that straight line kind of. in my water. It can be dramatic. You see that? So a little bit of blue, a little bit of turquoise. And we just starting at the shoreline and bringing it straight down. We'll touch up that black shoreline after we get this in, but it's just gonna be a straight dramatic drop. I'm gonna add a little bit more water to my brush, just a touch. Keep pulling this downward. And all those colors that I had on my brush are just kind of coming through. So that black is popping out there, giving it a pretty cool little gradient effect. I haven't cleaned the brush. I just added a little bit of water so that way everything can blend. I'm all about letting the paints kind of do their own thing. That little control chaos is awesome. It comes out with such cool stuff. And as I go back, I'm grabbing some more of the regular primary blue, a little bit of the turquoise, and making just these beautiful, long, straight strokes. Got some black going on in there. As I get to this side, I want things to darken up a little. This is going to be my darkest side because all the looks like the sun is sitting on this side. So this side's already more in twilight. I'm going to grab some of that dark purple that I mixed earlier with the blue and add it here. Give that just another color in there. Touch a little touch of black at the edge with some primary blue. make those colors kind of 
representative of what we've got going on in the sky. And on this side. Now, if you get your paint a little bit on your blue, on your black, don't worry, we can always touch that up. Anything about black. Good at covering everything up. So I'm gonna pull this up so you can kind of see. I'm just going straight down all the way across. Calm waters. If you need to, add a little bit of water to your brush. Loosen up those paint, that paint a little bit. And just pull everything down. I'll add some more colors to this layer. At our stars, lights, left off the bed. And on this side, I take my my turquoise and add a touch of red, and some orange. I just kind of let those blend. I'm just putting my brush right on the shoreline and pulling down. Just mixing all those colors together. <laughs> Making sure I get all the white, my white in here. If you need to, again, like I said, put your brush. So you not only have a gradient up top, you're gonna to have one nice down here at the bottom. And this one's going to go straight down, the one on top is going across. Remember to step away and take a look every now and again at what you're doing. Just so you can make sure that it's starting to look how you want it. Pull away a little bit, kind of take it in, see what spots you want to add a little bit to. Sometimes we just keep going, keep going, and then we're doing a little too much. So always step back a little bit, take a look, say, oh, well, I need a little more over here, or this is already good. I better stop while I'm ahead. It's easy to get carried away. Okay. So right now, I'm gonna let this dry. 
and I'm going to we're gonna we're gonna start on our on our dragon. You definitely gotta forgive me. I'm suffering like everybody else. My allergies are kicking my butt this week. So oh, there's my kitty. Here's my screenshot. I'm eleven. He's the cutest. Okay. <laughs> Back to our dragon. So we are going to set him up right here in the center. Now I had drawn him out, but he's basically been covered up by paint. So let's see what we can do here. Okay. I am going to take. I'm going to take my little brush. I'm pulling this forward, so it's easier to see. There we go. And you should have gotten a nice small brush if you got a kit. So I take that little brush and I'm going to start drying out my dragon. So I'm going to start on the tail. So there's a couple different dragons that you can do actually. Um, I am going to do the traditional uh harry potter style um big dragon with uh flappy wings if you wanted to go a different route and you wanted to do say uh you want to you want to do a chinese trick like like in shang chi um you can totally do that and i'm going to show you how right here so with the Shang-Chi dragon, um, he's basically, she basically looks like this beautiful long snake. And so what you're going to do, of course, you're going to load up your brush and you're going to do one big, beautiful swipe. So it would go down and you can do a swirl just like that, right? You can do dragon just like that. And then we would fill that in, of course. You make a tip. And then the body would just get built up and be a little thicker. And then you could add scales. So this would be if you wanted to do a traditional Chinese dragon. And then you create the head. Okay, so this is this is how you're going to do that one, if you want to do that. And then we build it up and add some shading and coloring. If you want to stick with me, that is perfectly fine. I just want to give you guys the option and a little bit of tutorial, just in case you want to go a different route. But since we're going, since I'm doing this one, we're going to, I'm going to continue on this. If you have any more questions on that Chinese dragon, let me know and we can go in a little bit more depth. Okay. So for my little English dragon, European dragon, we are going to start. I'm going to make like a smiley face, I guess you could say, just a smile in the sky. Nice and easy, right? And this brush is not very controllable, so I'm switching gears. I'm going to go to a little thicker brush. Okay, now from there, from the smiley face, I am 
going to come up and I'm going to just kind of make another little hill pump. So you got like a little smiley face. This is his belly, just so, just for reference, this is the bottom of his tummy. And then I'm gonna come out Just like that. It looks like a water snake. <laughs> um, from there, I'm gonna make like a little triangle. Okay, right? little triangle. That's his head. And then on the bottom where the tail at the end, the little smiley curve, you make another little triangle. And this one's just like a little thinner. So you fill that in, little triangle. Head, fill that in, little triangle. Okay. okay. Now, from about right there, so halfway, from your tail, kind of on the other opposite end, we're just gonna kind of connect, make a little curve and connect these two points. Just like that. Actually, it kind of looks like an eye. That's kind of how you would start if you were going to do an eye. And I'm just gonna fill that all in. And I'm filling in solid black. Your background, probably nice and dry by now. So you can go ahead and post on it. I'm just going to fill this whole little, this belly, body, it's all getting filled in. At this point, you can see where we're going with this. Okay. Like a little tiny dragon. You can thicken up that tail if you want. So I'm just going to add a little bit of thickness to the tail. And connect it a little bit more right here as it's coming into this, up towards this body. Okay. All right, so as for his wings, ooh. as for his wings, I'm going to wrap some more black. And I'm just almost going to connect right here, but not quite, okay? So I'm going to make another little curve. This is like, like a wonky C, right? A nice little wonky C. Then I'm gonna make, oh, that's too much paint. I'm gonna make another wonky C. I'm gonna connect this and come up. It's like make this funky little C that looks like it's hanging upside down. So these wings are just awesome. They're just, they're just wonky seas, really. 
and then we just connect them all from there. Another kind of opened, like wide open C. And then we're gonna make another one that's kind of laying down on its side. Okay. And then another C going this way. And then another one. And then from there, we're going to come straight down and connect that to his body. Now he's in flight. So perspective wise, one of his wings is going to look a little funky. It's gonna look a little thin. So it might not make sense yet, but bear with me. We are going to start here next to this one. And we're gonna go straight up. Still a bit of ways. There's a little bit right in between that C. We're going to make another wonky C. And then we're going to make a real skinny, skinny straight line up. So I'm just it's just at an angle up towards the top of your canvas. And then we're going to go straight out. Just like that. And then a little bit down. It's like just a couple different angles. And that's all that is. Okay. And then we're just going to follow those lines straight back to his body or her body. Whatever you dragons going to be. It's like in the book. It's no bird. No, it's no bird. Done. And I'm just pretty much following the curves that I've made and just really just going parallel from those and a nice thin line. And then I connect it. So you've got one nice, beautiful flared wing and then one skinny little wing. Just like when we used to make butterflies, one wing would be behind the other. So now I'm just gonna paint those two wings in. Now, I'm doing this in silhouette, um, but if you do this painting again, you don't have to. You can actually give your dragon some beautiful color, add some scales, you know, make it your own, whatever you want it to look like.
my favorite thing about these paintings. Everybody's painting is unique. We all mix the colors differently. We all pick colors that we like. It, I love it. I love seeing the end results because they're all so beautiful. And unique. And so just keep filling this all the way in. Nice and solid. Now, this right here, well, dragons usually aren't this flat. So I'm going to actually connect these a little bit and add a little more body to him. So like kind of shoulder blade area. I'm gonna soften that edge just a little bit. So that way it's not just a straight flat drop off. Okay. So give him a little, little bit of a body. Now I'm gonna grab my tiny brush. And grab some black. And I'm gonna give him some horns. So right towards the back. I'm just going to do a couple of horns. These are just two lines coming off of his head. It's right there, just like that. And then curve his snout a little bit. So this isn't just going to be like a flat triangle. I'm adding a little bit of a curve. And I'm just cleaning these lines up a little, just a little bit. So I'm softening my triangle up, the triangle that we made for his head. You can see now it's a little curved like a snout. And he's got, he's got some horns. A couple more if you want. I'm going to add a little bump, a couple bumps. So you can see he's got a little snout, a couple. Couple more lines. I'm gonna soften this area right here too. And then give him a little bit of a bump for where you would assume his eye is. 
and just giving a little bit more dimension to his to the shape of his head. Going to go. soften all those curves up. We've got a little chest. Give that a little bit of a curve. He might have some curves where he's tucking in his knees, his claws. You could even put his legs kind of tucked underneath him if you wanted to. As for his tail, I'm gonna make it a little more pointed with my tiny brush and let it kind of flow into the end of his tail. I'm gonna take my small brush and make my the tips of my C's a little more defined. So his wings, they're actually, we might not be able to see it, that well in, in this camera, but they're a little more blunted. And I, I just kind of want to put a little point on them. So I'm using my fine brush and I'm going to make the points on those a little pro more prominent, a little sharper. Just because I think. Kind of like a bat wing, they're gonna have a little more sharp tip to them. And with the size of brush that I was using a while ago, that's just not possible. This brush is fine tip. So I'm tipping those out. Just for drama, you don't have to do this. Some of these might even have a claw on the end. I'm just sharpening all these edges, making it more dramatic. So I made these nice and dramatic here. Here's tips. Tip it just nice and sharp. Like that. And so for me, he's pretty much done. I might put a couple little feet here. Little claws kind of hanging out. Okay. So, so far, looking pretty good. 
we've got our dragon, we've got our mountaintops, and we've got our beautiful sunset. So if you wanted to add anything more to your mountaintops, feel free. Um, I think later on, I'm gonna add a little castle here in the corner. But for now, we're gonna start on building up our beautiful background. So what I want to do, this is gonna be a little bit different. So if you have anything like a stick or anything, you could even use the back of your brush. We're going to start kind of just throwing some paint on here and letting it dry nice and thick. You could even use your brush. So if I got a, my dry brush, and I grabbed some orange and I just brushed it on here like that. And it's nice and thick and clumpy. Um, and I'm just gonna leave it there. It's just a big smudge of paint. And that's what I'm doing. I'm just gonna grab a big cloth of paint on my brush. So you can see. It's just a nice big glob of paint. And I'm just going to brush it across and leave it nice and thick and globby. And I'm going to let it dry like that. Just brush it on to where I like the way it looks and let it dry. So like my purple, and my purple kind of dried already, but that's okay. I can still grab some up. And I'm just gonna run it through. And where it's thick, just let it dry. Like I made some light purple. I'm just gonna kind of mush it in there. You see how those are all kind of mixing together because they're so wet. So what I want you to do, and this will be really fun, I want you to grab a glob of turquoise and we're gonna put, we're gonna do some turquoise dots here and there. Do you see how it's just kind of dripping off? That's how thick I want you to put it on there. You can do a whole bunch of these or you can just do a couple. We're gonna do some blue turquoise dots, right? And then right next to those, I'm grabbing some dark blue. I'm gonna put a blob of dark blue right on, right next to those. This is really fun. You, you know, like it. We're gonna we're gonna get messy. So just putting the globs right there, just like that, right? So what I'm gonna do now, wee, finger time. I get these, I'm just gonna press them on my finger. And just make this kind of funky circle. So you can actually go and swirl. That works too. Or you can just tap it and make a funky swirl. Nice and fun, nice and messy. And you can grab 
more paint if you want, if it's not as blue as you want it to be, or as turquoisey as you want it to be. You can grab more color. And the best part is we're getting messy. We're using our fingers. You can swirl it. If you swirl it, grab a mix of, of the dark blue and the turquoise. Swirl it around with your finger. Get that beautiful. That beautiful messy circle going there. And there's so much fun. And you can grab, you can grab blue and go on the outside. I, I love using my fingers. Makes things feel very dramatic. So I've got a couple big squirrels here. I'm going to just take some blue with my finger and kind of go around. I might even add a little bit of black to give it a little bit more drama. Make it a little bit darker on top. My finger's getting really dirty. So we're going to get rid of some of this black. And I'm going to grab some more blue just to combat that because I have a little too much on my finger. So I want this to definitely be like the darker color of the sun sunset and the clouds and twilight and night. It's darker, later it gets, the darker sky looks on top. We got some of that dark blue going in there. I'm going to swirl this with my brush because my fingers are getting really And going around and go around all my little swirly colors. So just those little bursts that we did there. I just kind of going around them. Let's see how that's working out. You can add more paint. So I'm throwing the paint on here, but I'm letting it, just kind of letting it sit. I'm not really brushing it and mixing it up. So it's nice and wet, just like down here on the bottom. I have a lot of paint. And so just like down here, I'm gonna pull this up a little bit more into my twilight sky. So I'm gonna grab my pink and make it nice and thick, just like I did up here. And take a good globiness of that and kind of just stroke it and bring it up 
to give it this nice swirly kind of thing going on as well. Make sure to be careful with my dragon. Thank you, make yourself some purple. Add a little purple. can add a little orange and yellow. We're mixing all these colors up. We wanna get these beautiful streaks of light. Like my first right here. I'm going to throw some blue back in here. Soften that pink up a little bit. Add a little color. Got some beautiful colors going on. It's a magical world, so we got dragons. So I'd say definitely step back, see how what you think, see if anything, if you want anything to. You want to tone stuff down, brighten stuff up. If it's just as much as you want, or a little bit more, a little bit less, find the spots that you want to tweak. So always take time to kind of take pause, take a second, take a look. Mixing all these colors together, giving that sunset a nice, beautiful pop. Movement and drama, that's what we're after. So now that I have all my swirls, they're kind of kind of dry, not quite. Um, I'm just going to get a smaller brush, none too small. Um, where's that one? Same one that you guys actually got in your packets. If you got a packet, you might have gotten this one. So, this little video one right here, I'm not sure exactly what says. But I'm going to grab some yellow on the dry brush. I'm just going to add some swirls to each one of these. So, and I'm making sure that because these are blue and they're not quite dry, after every single one, I'm going to wash off my brush because then the blue or turquoise, whatever your center is, is going to mix with that yellow and it's going to end up turning green. So definitely after every swirl, so got the swirl right here. I'm just gonna do a couple little swirly yellows, right? So that one's pretty dry, but this one still has lots of paint that's still wet right here in the center. So after that kind of swirl going on, I'm gonna I'm gonna just clean my brush off. It's starting to turn green. We don't want that. 
paint. So on to the next yellow. So this one right here on top. Got yellow. Gonna go to find the center. And I'm just kind of doing half circles. Just some half circles. Almost like the like like the arms of a galaxy. Brush your brush off if you got any blue on it. And then do the next one. Like that. Clean your brush off. And do the next one. This one has a really cool swirl in it. I'm gonna kind of copy that with my with my yellow. So I'm gonna go one and then in and kind of highlight that swirl because that looks really cool. Ooh, I got some blue on here. Okay. Just some cool, cool colors. I'm gonna add another one right here right in between his tail, just for the heck of it. Oh. Get that, and a couple little tiny ones. Just add some highlights here. This is all our color and our light. It's just getting dramatic with all of these swirls here. So as you can see, some of them are lighter, some of them are much bolder. It just depends on how much paint I have on my brush. So I'm just going to kind of follow path here of all my pretty paints. Everything's getting touched by the light. So we've got some dramatic kind of swirls here. Yeah. And then down at the bottom where my son is. So my son is like right here. That's that's where my brightest point is. I can add a little more yellow to that. And just make it nice. And then I'm gonna brush it out. So that way it kind of like just travels in this beautiful swirl that we're doing. These beautiful little brush strokes that kind of just disappear. So it's got lots of light right there, just very dramatic. fire on the sky. Awesome. Yeah, add a couple little right up here. I want a little bit of light around him, just, just a tiny bit. So I'm gonna add some pinks, kind of pull in the pink from here. Just some swirlies, just like we were doing, just little swirls that aren't quite the yellow fire ones, but just have some additional color to them. 
add a little bit of more color to my sky. Getting there, getting there. I'm gonna pull that out. Awesome. So once you've got your sky and you have all your little swirls that you want to put on there. We're going to move down to our water, right? So now maybe your dragon is flying over some beautiful coastal town or whatever, and you've got cities in the on you know on the hills, you know like Rio or something. You come up with your own story, your own scenario, your own story about what you got going on here. And you reflect that with your paints. So for me, and you guys know me already, I love Hogwarts and everything. So um, the, this is no, no Bertha, right? So she's flying over to go visit Hagrid, in my opinion. So I'm going to um, mix some black. Mm -hmm and some white, and I make myself a nice little gray right? for my highlights. And right here on my black little cliff, I'm going to just kind of make a few little kind of paps so that way it looks like you got a way to get up the mountain. Can you see that there? I'm just putting some gray up here. Can I give the mountain a little dimension? And kind of getting a path going. And I'm going to do that to the other side too. So my other side, I just want to define these little hills and stuff. So. I'm just going to add these so that way we've got some highlights. We can kind of differentiate the clips. Maybe there's a couple little hills in front of that. Just like that. And since water is super reflective, of course, all of my colors right here, I'm definitely going to pull into the water. So right here where my sun is, it goes this way, I'm going to kind of do a little bit of I'm just brushing this along and letting it kind of disappear into the water. You see that? And then we've got some of the yellow. So I'm going to grab some of the yellow. I mean, sorry, orange. I just did the yellow. I grabbed some of the orange and I'm going to go on either side of my yellow. And I'm just going to brush. And I'm just making these parallel to the shore. And I'm going to do them on both sides since I have orange kind of on both sides of my yellow. I'm brushing, brushing, brushing. I, I still have yellow on my brush. So you, if you can see they're kind of blending a little bit, that's 
kind of what I'm going for. Let me add a little more yellow, orange to this side. I don't know why I keep saying yellow. We were having a discussion about school bus yellow and how we debate whether it's actually orange or yellow. It's yellow, but I keep saying, I just keep saying yellow. We got a little bit there. If it's too much for you, you can definitely wet your brush and kind of soften those out. Orange is a very strong color. You can add some more yellow. Then I'm going to add some red, uh, just because I have some red going on over here on the side. So I'm pulling some red. And again, I'm going parallel to the shore. This is first we had our brush starts going straight down, and then these are just kind of going across. It's just reflecting because we still got a little bit of light left in the sky. On this side, I'm going to take that kind of purple color that I mixed. I add a little bit of white to it just so it's lighter. Because, of course, if it's reflecting, Going to be reflecting the brighter colors. I see. And I still haven't cleaned my brush off, if you're wondering. And just for emphasis, I take some white. We haven't actually really used white yet. So I'm just going to pull and kind of just brush some white strokes in here just to really get that sense of light. And they're gonna be very thin, like individual strokes. I'm not actually going to be putting a big chunk of them. So let me pull back a little bit. Let me go. So here, you can totally be done. This is pretty, pretty good. Um, if you guys are curious, like for me, what I'm gonna end up doing is putting a little building here. So I can show you right now, cause it's not gonna be hard. I have like a couple turrets. I'm going to have a nice big tower. So this is nice and fast. Um, it's just a bunch of squares and triangles. 
if you are curious, that's all it really is, is a bunch of squares and triangles. I got a couple of small triangles. And then you basically just color everything in, just like paint by number, nice and simple. So he's just heading back to the castle, heading back to Hogwarts. I got my little castle. It took no, almost no time. It was pretty fast, right? And then, like, if you wanted to, you could totally add some. Um, let me find a smaller. There we go. You can add some light to the castle. So it's not quite dark yet. So, like, if we wanted to. Add some windows. You get your tiny brush. I've got one little hair that's kind of sticking out. My brush. And I would just just add a bunch of little dots. So these are just like little dots. I'm just putting my my brush down. I just I got paint on it. I'm just set, setting it down and lifting it. That's all I'm doing. And it gives us the illusion that there's lights on. If you can see that. And then I would take that gray that we made for our little just to give it some dimension. And probably just oh, it's already dry up. So we just kind of Add a little bit there, just to kind of give this whole building some dimension and so you can see that there's different parts to it. Just like that, right? And that's pretty much it. So with the gray, I gave it just a little bit of contrast there. For my shoreline, I just want to clean it up a little bit. So I'm going to grab one of my medium brushes and kind of just go over it one more time, make it solid again. Because of all the paint that we put on there, Kind of got a little bit of murky. I don't want a murky short. Let's 
in the chat if you wanted to give your dragon like, where i'm looking at him i think he's a little bit of definition so just like we did on the mountains and the hills i'm going to take my gray and maybe just kind of define where his little chest is in comparison to his body and then maybe his shoulder blades where his wings are connected. So I'm just giving him a little bit of definition. So let's see, let's pull in so you can see a little bit better. So I added a little bit, you know, a little bit of scaling to his chest. And then maybe I'll define the webs a little bit. So from his wings, from all our little pointy parts, I'm just going to kind of bring those lines in. So that way it, you can kind of see. It's got a little bit of definition. It's not just all shadow. And that's it. Um, we're pretty much done. You can keep adding if you want. Like I said, if it's a, it's a, um, a shore town right on the coast, you could add some lights, some glowing lights here. Um, can add something to your mountains. It's up to you. But for the most part, this is it. I hope you guys have fun. Uh, and I, I hope you show me now if you, if you can. I'd love to see your pictures. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for joining me. And I hope you guys had a good time. I hope to see you um, at the next one. I cannot say if we're gonna do one in May or not, because uh, the semester will be over, uh, but definitely during, um, in June, we will pick it up once the semester starts, summer semester starts. And um, there's a possibility that we might do an in-person painting um, in July, so. Just watch the Miners Weekly Blast. I will let you guys know. And for the time being, have a great night. Have a fun holiday weekend. And I will see you guys next time. Okay. Take it easy. Bye.